The atria are the heart's upper chambers, and the ventricles are the lower chambers. Reentrant tachycardias are fast heart rates caused by electrical signals that loop back on themselves. Normally, an electrical signal starts at the sinoatrial or SA node in the right atrium. It then propagates out through both atria, including Bachmann's bundle in the left atrium, and then contracts both atria. It's then delayed just a little bit as it goes through the atrioventricular or AV node before it passes through the bundle of His and onto the Purkinje fibers of the left and the right ventricles, causing them to contract as well. Usually, the only place where a signal can go from the atria to the ventricles is at the AV node. And once that signal gets to the Purkinje fibers, it stops, and the heart tissue waits for another signal from the SA node. With an atrioventricular reentrant tachycardia, or AVRT, the electrical signal actually uses a separate accessory pathway to get back up from the ventricles to the atria, causing the atria to contract before the SA node sends out another signal. The signal then moves back down the AV node to the ventricles and the Purkinje fibers and contracts the ventricles, as well as goes back up that accessory pathway, and then the cycle repeats, which is why AVRT can result in rates as high as 200 to 300 beats per minute. This type of tachycardia is known as a supraventricular tachycardia because the signal causing the fast heart rate originates above the ventricles. The most common type of AVRT is Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, where the accessory pathway is called the Bundle of Kent. This type of re-entry is known as an anatomical re-entrant circuit, because the accessory pathway is a fixed, anatomically defined pathway. Another type of re-entrant circuit, though, is atrioventricular nodal re-entrant tachycardia, or AVNRT. AVNRT, just like AVRT, is a type of supraventricular tachycardia, but with AVNRT, it's in or near the AV node which, just like before, contracts the ventricle and the atria every time it goes around. Specifically, there are two separate electrical pathways that make up this loop, and one of these pathways has heart tissue that has slow electrical conduction, and is called the alpha pathway, and the other has fast conduction, and it's called the beta pathway. Not only that, though, the alpha pathway has a short refractory period, which is the time it takes to be able to conduct another signal. The beta pathway, on the other hand, has a long refractory period. Once you have all those things, you've got yourself a recipe for AVNRT. So now let's say a signal comes down from the SA node in the right atrium. The signal goes down the fast pathway and reaches the other end before the slow pathway, and then splits to travel down to the ventricles, as well as up the alpha pathway, where it meets the slow signal and they both cancel each other out. At this point, both go into their refractory period. Except the alpha pathway is shorter, right? So it comes out of refractory sooner and it's ready for another signal, while the beta pathway is still in refractory. So if another signal comes by, it'll start down the slow pathway. But since the fast is still in refractory, it'll be blocked. At some point while the signal's going down the alpha side, that beta side will come out of refractory, and then it'll be ready to go. So now as that signal exits the alpha pathway to the ventricles, and enters the refractory period, it also travels up the beta pathway. And by the time it reaches the alpha pathway again, that pathway is out of refractory. So now you have this re-entrant loop set up that just keeps going and going. And every time around, it causes both an atrial and a ventricular contraction, which again, just like AVRT, leads to high ventricular rates. This particular setup where it goes down the slow pathway, or interrograde, and up the fast pathway, or retrograde, is called slow fast AVNRT, or typical AVNRT. It's also possible to have the opposite though, called fast slow AVNRT, or atypical AVNRT, which as the name suggests is a lot less common than slow fast AVNRT. With this type, the pathway goes down the fast pathway, or anterograde, and up the slow pathway, or retrograde. The tachycardia with AVRT and AVNRT typically doesn't last very long, and both are rarely life-threatening. They can, though, both produce symptoms like palpitations, shortness of breath, and feelings of dizziness, as well as syncope, or fainting, in rare cases. With an ECG, the P wave is a signal from atrial contraction, and the QRS is the signal from ventricular contraction. On an ECG with AVNRT, the P wave might not be visible, since the signal is getting to the atria and the ventricles at almost the same time. So the P wave starts essentially where the QRS starts, 
and when you add them together, the P wave can get buried under the QRS complex. With AVRT, the P waves might or might not be buried, depending on where the accessory pathway is located. The definitive treatment for either AVRT or AVNRT is radiocatheter ablation, essentially destruction of the accessory pathway with AVRT and destruction of the slower alpha pathway with AVNRT. For AVNRT, sometimes people can use vagal maneuvers as well, which are ways to activate the vagus nerve, which tends to block the AV node temporarily, therefore potentially stopping the episode. Some methods include a corroded sinus massage as well as a Valsalva maneuver, which is forced exhalation against a closed airway. Also, they might use medications to slow AV node conduction. In rare cases where other treatments haven't been effective though, they might need cardioversion. Thanks for watching.